this is organized chaos and <laughs> welcome to my world this is actually my first time going live on youtube but i thought this would be a great opportunity to come share with you how i became a travel scientist um i've been a clinical laboratory scientist for the past 20 years and since 2015 i became a travel clinical laboratory scientist if you know anything about me if you've been following my page and my platforms and facebook and instagram you will know that um this platform is everything all things money travel and freedom so i had an amazing opportunity to become a traveler back in 2015 with my first assignment being in hawaii and ever since then um becoming a traveler has been amazing because i have the freedom and flexibility to work whenever wherever i've been inspired through this whole experience so much so that i wrote a book about it about personal finance how to organize your finances and live the life that you deserve um and no matter what it is that you do for a living because for me, I like to travel outside the country. I just got back from living in Mexico for three years, I mean, three months, <laughs> speaking to existence. And um, when I'm traveling internationally, I can't work as a clinical laboratory scientist because I am ASCP certified, which is my national certification in America. So outside of America, I'm not able to work as a traveler, but I just returned from Mexico and now I'm going to take an assignment in California. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to come on and share because I get asked this question a lot, um, how to become a travel scientist. I'm just going to share with you um, some of the most frequent asked questions that I get about a becoming a travel scientist. And so um, obviously the first thing <laughs> is to get your um, certification and um, certification and and there's, there's a couple of certification routes that you can take. Like I said, I am ASCP. There's also, um, I think it's AAB. And there are some other um, certifications that are available. So I recommend you get your certification and then get your license, depending on what state that you want to work in. I work in Georgia and in Georgia, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I live in Georgia. And so in Georgia, um, your national license is sufficient. But there's, I think, four to five states that require a state license. Um, California, Hawaii, Florida, New York, Tennessee, to name a few. So before you become a traveler, um, have in mind where you want to work if you're open and you're flexible, but also keep in mind that some states require a state license on top of your federal license. So that's one tip. And I would recommend, uh, especially for new grads and new scientists who want to become travelers, is to get at least one year of experience under your belt. Um, it's not necessarily required, but it is um, advantageous to you as a scientist to get as much experience as you can because then you can leverage your contract and you can pretty much leverage where you want to work and when you want to work because you have the year experience. And, um, and like I say, experience as a journalist in blood bank, if you can get that, because that definitely give you um, a leg up in terms of competing with other travelers for an assignment. So at least a year, not required, but I highly recommend it. I was working 15 years before I became a traveler. And like I said, I definitely recommend <laughs> having at least a year because you have to think in these situ situations and circumstances, um, these hospitals, they are in dire need. That's why they're hiring a traveler and not a full-time employee because they, they're short staff, the understaff, high demand, whatever the circumstance is, is very dire. So they, you don't have the luxury of being trained like you would if you were a full-time or part-time employee. There's been times where I, I was lucky if I got one week of training. So you definitely, to help minimize the stress and help you manage 
going into a new place and having to learn quickly, I highly recommend you have at least a year under your belt. So once you have experience, then um, you want to apply to an agency. And agencies is like the middleman between you and the facility. Wherever you decide you want to travel, you have to go through a recruiter and get a contract so you can get hired. And, and you got to think as a traveler, think of yourself as an independent contractor. You are your own boss. Um, so these recruiters, or what I call the middleman, they are the ones that get the contracts for you. And you are the one that negotiate your terms and your um, how much money you want to make. And so that, let me back up. So apply to an agency and don't limit yourself to one. I The advice I got going in was apply to at least three or four different agencies. Luckily for me, when I came into the game, <laughs> I, I did apply to three or four agencies, but I established a relationship with a recruiter with AMN Club Staffing, and it has been amazing. Um, but I will, and why I recommend several agencies, because again, that gives you leverage, that gives you um, an opportunity to negotiate um, because different agencies di get different contracts and some of those contracts are exclusive. So if you want to work in a certain area or a certain hospital, um, sometimes those contracts are exclu uh, exclusive to certain agencies. And then um, in terms of getting the terms that you want, there's a competition happening there because you are the product, so to speak, because you're the one that's going to go on the job. So um, it's a relationship uh, where they, they need you, you need them to be able to make this work. So getting and applying to several agencies is an opportunity for you to see what agency, what recruiter works for you and have your best interests at heart. And like I said, luckily for me coming into the game, I did apply to several agencies, but I've had a great relationship and um, with AMN Club staffing and have not used any other um, agency in it's been a perfect relationship. So apply to several agencies and kind of shop around till you find one that's a great fit for you. And you may have to go through several recruiters. You may have to go through several agencies until you find that fit. But be prepared mentally and know that's what's going to happen. Um, next, you want to know your why. Like, what's your why for becoming a traveler? Um, is it for the money? Is it for the experience? Is it for do you love to travel? Understand and know your why. Again, that's good to have and understand and knowing that going in because that helps you and gives you a leverage and it helps you in negotiating contracts. And for me, for example, I became a travel because I wanted to travel. And the idea of someone paying me to travel was phenomenal. Like, But for me, it was the experience. So it wasn't necessarily so much about the money. However, I knew going in the minimum amount I want to accept for a contract because that is important. People ask, well, how much do you get paid? It really depends on your location. It really depends on um, the, the particular contract, um, the pay rates, the state that you're working in. And a, gr a good way to research and understand pay rates, because as a traveler, you get paid a base rate and you get paid per diem. And the way you determine your hourly weight, because when you're offered a pay package, it's going to break down per diems, which is your tax-free money. <laughs> that is tax-free money. And then it's going to have your base pay. And what you want to do is you add all this up, because it's, it's usually broken down like by week, um, weekly, right? So what you do is you add those amounts up and then you multiply that by um, 40 to understand, let me see, yeah, so you add that up and divide by 40, sorry, divide by 40, and that will give you your hourly rate. And so um, to have an understanding of what's a good rate in terms of per diem, a great website that I use to make sure that I'm being offered a fair rate for per diem is g um, www.gsa.gov now this is a website for um uh federal um employees or contract employees like military um however it gives you an idea what the pay rate is by the state because cost of living expenses all those things are different from state to state and that's why um your pay rate may vary from state to state but i use this website to make sure that i have 
um, I'm being offered a fair rate for the state that I'm working in. So use that website to your advantage and also have your why and your um, minimum amount hourly that you're willing to work for because there's times where you're going to you're gonna have to negotiate. You have to know your worth and know who you are and know the value that you're bringing to the recruitment agency and the facility you're going to be working at and be very clear, be very firm on that. And you may have to go back and forth, but it's okay. It's a part of the experience, but it is well worth it. Like I said, for me, it was for the idea for someone to pay for me to travel. So I going in was very specific and very clear that I had a minimum amount that I was willing to work for because I knew what I was already making and I have the experience as well as location. I was very clear that I wanted warm weather, beaches, mountains if possible, very clear. <laughs> so that pretty much limited me to Florida, Hawaii, and California. And again, these all three of these states require an additional state license. So I knew this going in. So I had to apply for all three state licenses. And Hawaii and Florida were, I wouldn't say easy, but they were simpler compared to California. Um, I was able to get my Florida license, my Hawaii license. My first assignment was in Hawaii. Um, it took me two years <laughs> after becoming a traveler to get my California license because I had to. The state licensing for California is a little bit stricter than other states. And so, because um, like for Hawaii and Florida, you send your payment, you send them your documentation, and you're done. Um, with California, I for undergrad, I needed to have physics and I didn't take physics, so I had to literally go back to school. But it was well worth it because California, um, you can get as much as 50 to $60 an hour working in the state of California. So it was it was an investment and well worth it. And so um, having your why, having your, okay, I'm sorry, having your license and understanding in the states that you want to work in, understanding that, um, having your state license, that's important. Um, leveraging and negotiating your pay using the per diem website. And um, what else? I forgot the last one that I said, but those that's exact that's pretty much how I became a a traveler. And like I said, I've been traveling for the past six years now. And I absolutely love it. I love the freedom. I love the flexibility. I love the idea that I can work whenever I want to work. Um, this year, I only plan on working um, for 13 weeks in California. And once I come back, I'm leaving tomorrow, actually, <laughs> to go to Palm Springs. And I'll be working for 13 weeks. And when I get back, I don't plan to work again until next year. So um, if you like this content, you like this video, um, please comment, share, um, send me a message. And I'll be more than happy to help you navigate and walk through this process. And, um, yeah, because like I said, it's the freedom and flexibility for me. Um, do check me out at organize-kaos.com where I talk about more about organizing your finances to live the life that you deserve doing what you love. Thank you so much. And, um, like I said, if you like this content, let me know and I'll do more videos, um, about being a travel scientist and, Maybe more into what I do when I'm not <laughs> a travel scientist. Because like I said, internationally, I can't work as a travel. So I am an author. I am a financial life coach. That's what I do on the side when I'm not in the lab. Because I can't take the lab out of the country with me. So anyway, um, thank you so much for tuning into the live. Y'all be great and live freely. I don't know how to end it. This is my first time doing the live, Jesus. I guess I just hit the X. <laughs> mm. Okay, filter come through.